One thing nobody tells you when you start your business is that it is insanely hard as a contractor to know if you're doing well in your business financially. Most competitors don't talk to each other, let alone share their numbers. And it's not like you can swing by your public library and go and find the textbook on what should my service plumbing business be making every year. You know what I mean? We get this question on profit margins so often, we thought we'd make a video about it, but before we dive in, a little context, okay? We here at Breakthrough Academy have worked with over 1,500 contractors all over North America since 2015. We systemize their businesses for growth, and to coach them effectively, we have to have full access to their books, which we do. Quick aside, actually, if you're working with an advisor or a coach who doesn't have a complete picture of your business data, they're not really coaching or advising you. Anyway, this gives us a pretty interesting aggregate perspective on what good looks like financially speaking in this industry. We have members who are making over a million dollars a year in their businesses, and then we have other members that we're bringing back from the brink of bankruptcy. We've seen it all, and we're going to share some ranges for both gross profit and for net profit for a handful of the industries that we coach the most. Quick refresher on gross profit and net profit. I know all of you are super smart business owners who read tons of books and you, you know this already, but just in case some of you are maybe a little blurry on the difference, wouldn't hurt for a quick refresh. Okay, so gross profit is the money you make off of the projects or services you complete before paying for overhead, like manager salaries, like your office, like your many vehicles, like marketing, etc. It's basically revenue minus variable expenses, which in your case is predominantly labor materials, subcontractors if you use them, and then any other miscellaneous job site related, project related expenses. Net profit, well that's your bottom line. And by the way, the net profit benchmarks that we're gonna share here are after you pay yourself. That's right, the business still needs to make its own money. Now, both gross and net are important, but generally speaking, your focus should be on maximizing your gross profit because that's where you can make the most significant difference. That's where you can really move the needle the most. It should also be said that your net can vary a lot year to year. You might actually make some really intelligent, strategic capital investments into your business that hurt your net profit one year, but are indeed the right things to do for your company's future. And so for those reasons and a bunch of others, we generally put the bulk of our attention and our system towards an optimal gross profit. Now, one last quick note before we dive in, this conversation about profit benchmarks, this fits into what we call financial controls, which is one part of our contractor growth method, the only business system purpose-built for contractors. That's you. So if you wanna learn more about the contractor growth method and what we do here at Breakthrough Academy, you can click here. Without further ado, the benchmarks that we coach our Breakthrough Academy members off of. By the way, if you disagree with these, tell us why in the comments. I love nothing more than a good YouTube comment spat. So let us know. Okay, so gross profit and net profit margins for remodelers, or as we call them here in Canada, renovators, pretty simple. For your gross profit margin, if you're making less than 25% gross in these industries, we would consider you, that needs work. Your business needs work in that area. 25 to 40%, we would say is acceptable, and anything above 40%, that's exceptional. You're really starting to make some good money there. You're managing your projects well. The estimating is on point. You're keeping your customers happy. That's excellent. Trickling down to the net profit, anything below 5% really needs work. That's not very much of the pie you're leaving left over for reinvestment, for growth, et cetera. Anything from 5 to 15%, we would say that's acceptable. And anything north of 15%, we would call that exceptional. That's really good. Okay, so let's go through some margins for custom home builders or general contractors, GCs for short. Now, we make a distinction here between an in-house labor model and a subcontractor labor model. I'll, I can explain it very, very quickly. In an in-house labor model, most of the people on your job sites are your employees. So you lean towards hiring more people, having a bigger team so that you have more control over the project. You can build a tighter culture with better values. Theoretically, you have a little bit more control over the end product, all that's true. But 
what that means is that you have to carry more overhead to support those so, to support those employees. On the subcontractor model, you make a bit of a trade-off. You say, hey, I'm not going to team build as much. I'm going to hire more subcontractors. I'm going to have less overhead because I have less employees to support, but I'm going to be charged more by those subcontractors than what it would cost me to produce this work if these employees were in-house. And so that's why you see generally the net profits on these two are the same. And But on the subcontractor, the gross margin is a little bit lower. That's kind of the trade-off you make. But anyway, here we go. For the in-house labor model, anything below 22% gross needs work. 22 to 28, we would say, is acceptable. Anything north of 28 is exceptional. You're starting to make some good money there. Uh, on the net profit front, anything below 8% needs serious work. 8 to 15 is good. Above 15, we would say, is exceptional. For a subcontractor model, Okay, gross profit, anything below 16% needs some work. You might want to ask your subcontractors to sharpen their pencils a little bit. Uh, maybe you're not quoting accurately or properly. If you're between 16 and 20% gross on the subcontractor model, that's acceptable. Above 20%, we would say that's exceptional. And then on the net profit, anything below 5 bad, not good. 5 to 15, okay, above 15, starting to get really good. Okay, roofing and exterior construction. We put these two types together because their profit margins are very similar. Now I know somebody watching this video who does siding is like very offended that I put them in the same category as roofers. Get over it, you're fine. As far as tracking numbers and, and profitability is concerned, these businesses really resemble each other. So we've put them in the same category, okay? Now, again, we need to make a distinction. There's retail and insurance. Retail being homeowner needs a new roof. They call you, you put a new roof on, you bill them, both go on your merry way. Insurance being a storm rolls through or a weather event rolls through, a whole bunch of roofs have you know, been damaged quite badly and the contractor goes in, completes the work for the homeowner, but then the billing is usually done, either some or all of it, through the insurance company. Versus, okay, the commercial sector where you're doing large buildings, industrial buildings, strip malls, restaurants, hotels, uh, bigger average job size contracts. It's all roofing, but we wanna make the distinction between retail and insurance. We'll talk about those first and then commercial. So for the retail and insurance roofing, if your gross profit is less than 40%, we would say that that needs work. 40 to 45, you're okay. Above 45, exceptional. You're starting to make some really good money. Business is healthy. Net profit below 10%, no good. 10 to 15, acceptable. Above 15 is exceptional. We have many, many roofers who are actually above 20%. That can be a very, very profitable business if you build the right team and you have the right systems and your estimating is on point. On the commercial side, you'll notice it equals out to about the same net profit margin, but they have a lower gross, and that's usually because the large contracts of commercial works, the margin gets competed down a little bit. You have to kind of sharpen your pencil for the big jobs, so to speak. So uh, for commercial roofers, anything below 30% gross, we would say is not good. That needs work. 30 to 35, we would say is acceptable. Above 35 is great. Net profit below 10, not good. 10 to 15, okay, above 15%, we would say is exceptional for commercial roofers. Okay, so for the painters with the sprayers and the rollers and the ladders, slapping the paint on the buildings, you know who you are. We're gonna make a distinction between residential and commercial. These are really good businesses, as you can see, because they actually have like just baked in, they have really healthy margins, generally speaking. So for residential, if your gross profit is less than 42%, we would say that that needs work. 42 to 47, pretty good. Above 47, exceptional. And we actually have a few members who are like above 50 and even 55% gross profit margin, if you can believe that. They're making serious dough. It's a really, really healthy business when it's up at that level. When it comes to your net, below 12%, we would say needs work. 12 to 18%, pretty good. Above 20%, above 18 or 20% is exceptional. When it comes to commercial, okay, um, very, very, very similar, right? You'll see all the same ranges. Below 42 on the gross needs work. 42 to 47 is good. Above 47 is, is really good. Net profit the same as residential, largely the same as residential. 
I want to make a, a quick little point here. The, you know, the commercial painting bucket is a broad bucket. So uh, we could be talking about commercial repaints. We could be talking about new construction. We could even be talking about HOAs or stratas that you're doing. Um, you might be doing, you might be bidding on large public jobs. So those large, generally speaking, the larger the project, the more, the more downward the pressure is on the gross profit, because when you're, Tendering work, you're competing against against a bunch of contractors. Uh, you compete away some of the margin, so you need to make some adjustments depending on the type of commercial work that you're doing. But generally, at Breakthrough Academy, as a really good rule of thumb in the painting universe, you never want to be submitting work with a gross profit less than forty percent. Okay, so that's the painters. Okay, landscaping. You guys love to be outside in the sun with the grass and the bugs and the trees and the compost and an odd bunch of landscapers, but we love them. So another distinction between construction, landscape construction, where you're building you know, beautiful front yards, backyards, retaining walls, large complex projects, usually with quite a bit of design, uh, landscape design needed versus maintenance, which, you know, I'm kind of stereotyping here is typically mowing lawns, trimming hedges, keeping the product, maintaining the property to make sure it looks nice. So we make a, there's a big difference between those two types of models. Many of you listening will have a full service business. So you'll do a bit of both and you might even have snow removal, which we don't have margins for today, maybe in a future video. But if you have a full service business and you blend the two, you're going to need to make some adjustments um, based on you know how much of construction you do, how much maintenance you do. Anyway, I digress. Landscape construction, here's what we see. Below a gross profit, below 30%, we say needs work. 30 to 37, pretty good. Above 37%, we would say is exceptional. Um, on the net profit level, anything below 10%, not good. 10 to 20, accept, acceptable. Anything above 20% is exceptional. That's really, really good and very, very close. I might even bring that number down to like 18% to say that's exceptional. Make the exceptional benchmark a little easier to hit. So that's the construction side. On the maintenance side, you have a way higher gross profit margin usually. So anything below 45% needs work. 45 to 55 is acceptable. Anything above 55%. Uh, on the maintenance side, we would consider exceptional for your gross profit. And then net profit looks really similar. Anything below 10 needs work. 10 to 18, pretty good. Anything north of 18 is really, really good. So that's it for landscaping. Okay, plumbing and electrical. You guys know the difference. There's service and then there's construction. Service, you're doing service calls. You're going out because there's a leak in the house. You need to fix it. The toilet's broken. You need to fix it. Construction, you're getting hired by a general contractor or a renovator to do the plumbing or electrical parts of that new construction project or that renovation project, what have you. Slight difference between these two for the service, uh, plumbing, and electrical businesses. Anything below 40%, a gross profit below 40%, needs work 40 to 50 acceptable above 50% we would say is exceptional net profit okay anything below 12 not good 12 to 18 accept acceptable and above 18 we would say is exceptional and then on the construction front it's just a little bit lower on the gross profit so you typically would have anything below 35% needs work gross profit 35 to 45% pretty good you're in a sweet spot there and then north of 45% you're really rocking and rolling uh, for net profit, anything below 10% needs work. 10 to 16, kind of a sweet spot again. And then north of 16, you're rocking and rolling. So that's it for the plumbers and the electricians. Okay, that should give you something to go off of. If you are currently growing your business in one of the industries I just mentioned and you want to grow your business the smart way using systems with the community, with the coach, you have to check out Breakthrough Academy. You can do that clicking the button up here. And if we didn't list your industry and you'd like us to maybe do some research and compile some metrics for you, if it is, you know, generally speaking, a contractor home service type business, we can do that. Let us know in the comments uh, what we should make on our next video. That's it today. See you next time.